Like lots of other people, my favourite part of FIFA career mode is bringing through young players, seeing them develop, selling them and buying a new generation. If you're like this, then I'm really going to recommend you start a FIFA career mode in the Portuguese league. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you exactly why, exactly who to pick, where to scout and some realistic signings if you are interested in using real players. I really do rate the Portuguese league, in fact it's one of my favourite on the entire game. I see it rarely used online, no one uses it on Reddit, no one uses it on Discord or Twitter and it's actually got a ton of super interesting players, teams and league rules. So the league rules are actually really easy, you have to have 53 players in your squad and you can only have 6 players aged 18 or 19 making their debut each season. This is quite a unique restriction to be honest, if you try and incorporate this in your FIFA career mode save, it means you're going to have to choose exactly which young players you want to bring through each season. This might sound like a restriction that makes youth players harder, but it actually does make you choose exactly which ones you want to develop. I really do rate this rule and maybe you can incorporate this if you're going to do a save in a different league. So of course a ton of the young players in the Portuguese league are from Portugal. Where else are they from? Well you're going to be also looking to find players from Portugal and Brazil, France, Spain, Colombia and Argentina. These are the five other nations that have the most players, but Brazil has over 10 times more players in the Portuguese league than France, which is the second most. So you're definitely going to be scouting Portugal, you're definitely going to be scouting Brazil, and then I'll leave it up to you to pick another European or another South American team for you to try and scout. This is going to give you a nice different variation of players, of course they'll all be able to speak Portuguese as well because that is the language they speak in Brazil and you're going to have a pretty fun, maybe very skillful youth team if you've got a lot of young Brazilians. Of course Western Europe and South America are two of the nations that have the highest youth ratings in the game's code, so you're always going to have a nice generation of high potential players ready to come through into your first team. While you're signing these players, you can of course develop them as fast as you like, but if you want to keep the Portuguese league fairly difficult or fairly fun, I would recommend you probably try and sell most of your players once they've reached the 80 to 82 overall mark. There's not that many players that stay in the Portuguese league that long. I think Jonas and Hulk were both above this a long time ago, and there's not been that many players since who have been of this rating. It's about the same rating that Jao Felix was when he went to Atletico Madrid. It's about the same rating that Ruben Neves was. So if you try and keep your players to this rating, sell them, you're always gonna have a nice dynamic of having a few good players, a few developing players, and then a lot of money to spend on your youth academy. So what teams can you pick in Portugal? The big and the most obvious three you can pick are Porto, Benfica and Sporting. These are the biggest three teams in the whole country by far. They've got the best youth academies, they've got the biggest fan bases and I think two of them actually have real stadiums on FIFA 23. However, I would recommend you go with FC Braga. You've seen some of the clips of my career mode in the background where I'm actually managing as Braga. So I really do recommend them. I'm having a blast of the time with the fourth biggest team in Portugal. At the same level, you've also got teams like Boa Vista and Vitoria. These have decent squads, they're not quite as good as Braga, but if you want more of a road to glory getting up to the top, go for one of these two teams. Unlike other leagues where I'd recommend you go for one of the worst teams in the league, I don't think that's actually too fun to do in Portugal. The difference in ability of the best squads in the league versus the worst squads is just too big for it to be fun for the first couple of seasons. You'll be regularly getting destroyed 4 or 5 nil by some of the better teams if you're on the right difficulty, so I wouldn't recommend you go for these tiny teams in the league. Santa Clara is one that I've mentioned a ton on this channel, I just love where they are based on an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, so that's another good option if you're interested in one of the smaller teams, but definitely go for someone like a Braga or a Boa Vista if you do want to try and develop a team up to the top. The big three can be fun, but like I said, you already start out with the best squads and the biggest potential, so if you're interested in building your squad, go for that second level of team. So the realistic signings in this league, of course, it's going to be similar to where you sign players from in your youth academy. With there being so many Brazilians, I think that signing players from Brazil, if they were real, would be a good idea. However, unfortunately, the Brazilian players on FIFA 23 are all fake. Next up, you have like Argentina. That's a decent league to be going for. Mexico used to be a good one, but it's not on the game anymore. You can see a few Americans starting to head to Portugal. It's a nice little hopping off point where you move from the MLS to somewhere like Portugal. And then from there, you can join a team in England or Spain very, very easily. So have a look at North America as well when you're looking for real players. 
Something you'll see with some of the smaller teams in the league is that they do like to scout a lot of young Spanish talent. In fact, some of the second division sides in Spain will loan players out to the top division of Portugal to some of the bottom ranked teams. This gives them some good first team experience and also probably better facilities than you would get in the second division of Spain. Scouting in Africa is yet another good opportunity. Portuguese Empire had a ton of different holdings in Africa. So there's a lot of Angolans, there's a lot of Mozambique players, Cape Verdeans, who are all heading over to Portugal. So if you see a player in a different league, maybe you see someone from one of these three nations playing in Italy, it would be a very believable transfer if you wanted to get them to come to Portugal. And this is all summed up into a big package. So why is Portuguese league actually just the best youth league on the game? Well, it's a lot to do with behind the scenes information where Portugal and Brazil are two of the best places in the entire globe to scout for your youth academy. You'll get the best youth players coming through in these countries. That's a big part of why they're so fun to play. But also the realistic rule of only having six players make a debut every single season is another big rule. And I do like that one too. The fact that you can try and sign players who are maybe not good enough for a big league, but they would be good enough for you, means you can get some bargains and develop them. That's another good reason. And I honestly do like the fact that you can pad your stats really easily once you get to the top. So if you're playing as someone like Braga or Porto, Benfica Sporting, when you're playing against these lower ranked teams, they've got players who are probably 10 to 15 overall lower than your players. So you can absolutely destroy some of them, which is quite fun. And then you also do have the ability to have really tough games against the fellow big teams. So this kind of combination of having easy matches and difficult matches you don't really see that in any other league. I mean, even the Premier League, the worst teams like Nottingham Forest, they're still full of 76, 77 overall players, whereas teams like Man City are mainly 85 to 86. So it's only eight or nine different ratings, depending on which players you have on the pitch. The unevenness of Portugal just makes it super fun in basically every single match. No matter who you're playing, if you're playing as one of the hardest teams at the bottom, then you're gonna have struggle matches where you're gonna have to fight for every single point. Or if you've got one of the better teams at the top, you're gonna have nice easy matches where you can play some of your youth players that maybe you wouldn't give a chance normally. This combination, everything like this, really does make Portugal the best youth league in my opinion. If you've got any suggestions for other leagues that are super good for youth, for example, I think the Dutch league is very similar to this. It's not quite the best league in Europe, but it does have a ton of good youth players with high potential. It's quite uneven when you've got teams like Ajax, and then you've got some of the ones at the bottom of the league as well who are a lot worse. So maybe Portugal and Holland, they're very even, but I would still go for Portugal. If you've got any suggestions for teams or nations that you'd do certain things with, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Maybe you always start out in Turkey or the MLS and you just try and sign as many old or big name players as possible. Let me know in the comments below. But thank you all for watching. Hopefully you give a Portuguese career mode a go. You'll probably see one on this channel very soon. Hint, hint for my career mode. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more and I'll see you soon. Thank you and goodbye.